this where the national government itself not aware of what is this number one and number two even if we have a curriculum we don't have a faculty who can even come forward and you know teach these things and number three the industries are so shy and they are not in a position to you know collaborate and understand the pain what we have and they always sit on the other side of the table and say that you know students are not meeting the expectation right so i just wanted to you know throw this question very openly to the team sitting in the dais to see how collaboratively the industry can come forward to make sure that the talent pool that is being generated through this production factory is really able to meet the demands because we have a huge challenge huh? yes. still we have a problem of teaching plc to a student we still have a problem huh? okay i mean if anybody from so that is what that is what i told today what is happening is that you know hr role comes very very important here why because today what hr is there it is only for the recruitment as per the requirement of the management as i told you that they have to become a business partner they have to become a strategy partner once they become a strategy partner what will happen is that they were able to you know that put forth this requirement to the top management that this skill if you require is not available we have to partner this with some of the institution which we feel are the right and we'll have to look forward for this not only this as i also told you that every day is a changing requirement so whatever plc you are learning today the second version is coming on to the next month by the time so it become a relevant for him so how to actually cope up with this and there only the industry will have to play a major role because we face this problem day in day out because whatever we are going to you know teach our people in terms of the training program that become a relevant after some time so we still in any case are investing a lot of money rather than investing that money if we can invest that money into to the institution and providing them those kind of a support then i think that's the way it has to be uh, it has to be a collaborative uh, approach and where you know that the hr has to make convince the top management also to partner with the institutions like you yeah and just if you look at the the, the vocational educational training uh, alliance that was set up the idea here is the government should give a framework they should tell you how many courses what is the requirement to pass a course and then the content of the courses should be a decision between the university and industry you're never going to get a guy who comes into your factory and does 100% work there's always a training period whether you're in germany in france in the us in japan doesn't matter but the, as you said if i don't teach plc's today and i'm talking about industry 4.0 uh i'm not talking about ethernet ip i'm not talking about all those various technologies there's no chance on this planet that i'm going to build the kind of capabilities in scale right we are good at building singular solutions but we need to scale if the country as a whole should move up uh, in fact uh, to add to the point of the panelist what exactly you precisely asking is absolutely right point my experience with students uh, when i whenever i travel to the second tier cities and the rural students i really pity them because uh, i just ask them i want to bring the ground level experience so that we we don't talk something from the cloud when i ask them why are you actually studying engineering they went on to say i want to get a job now when i ask them what is the kind of a job that you need to, you are looking at sir some company they use a word called some company uh, 15000 20000 first pay is fine this is the ground reality when this is a kind of an intention that is there in the country when i say country because your student makes your country basically and that is they are the future workforce when the motivation level and their interest level their knowledge levels are so downgraded then you can't expect the advanced technologies to emerge the country now what is it, what is that we need to do to ensure that they transform themselves is precisely the government push is very very important now again government comes out with make in india then government comes out with digital india startup india stand up india and take it from me these campaigns remain as campaign and there is no evangelist who actually take up this to the ground level first awareness itself is not about there is not there about already existing technology then we are talking about the improving the technology and we are talking about recruiting for the future now that is a kind of an agenda that is running in it is a collaborative effort pushed by the government collaboration with the industry and academia is very very important all three of the stakeholders with respect to bringing any technology in the country collaborating the collaborating academia government and uh, industry is very very important there is complete disconnect in the country presently and there's a uh, sorry yeah please go ahead 
Yeah, just one point. I mean, it's not that it cannot be done. If you look at Bangalore today, Bangalore has an ecosystem where uh, Siemens and SAP are extremely happy to be operating in Bangalore rather than Stuttgart. Right? We have ecosystems that are really quite exceptional. Uh, my main uh, sort of comment would be, or suggestion would be, let's study how that worked and how can we replicate? Because one Bangalore does not employ 1.2 billion Indians. It's not going to work. Right? We need a, a broader base. Uh, Tamil Nadu is a good example. 18 districts are industrial. As a consequence, my uh, urbanization rate is 52%. As a consequence, the people employed in uh, agriculture are only around 30%. So there's a lot of positive that is happening based on the right policies. How can we make sure that they become more prevalent throughout the country and get the scale that we need. Uh, any other question? There's one in the back. Just wait for the mic, please. Today, today, yeah. engineering institutions and the industry, they are not working hand in hand as it has to happen, but it is not happening. Some of the uh, engineering institutions are still following vintage syllabus, which is not tailor made or suitable for the industry. The industry and the engineering institution should be brought under one roof, but that is also not happening. We come across many forums, many platforms where things are discussed at length, but at the end of the day, things are forgotten. So Satya was mentioning quite often, the HR has to play a very vital role, including policy making with regard to education. Though my question is addressed to the panelist, it is addressed to Chroma, I would like to know what steps Chroma will take to communicate to the government to communicate to the education authorities like EIST and other bodies, Sanna University or many other technical universities, how to bring the industry and the educational institutions under one roof. See, swimming cannot be taught in practice in, cl in classrooms, in four walls. The learner should be pushed into the pool to learn. What is happening in the uh, technical universities? It is 99% uh, theory and only 1% exposed to the industry. Many companies are not willing to take graduate engineers for the simple reason they feel they are not suitable to the work culture. So work culture as an engineer to be inculcated while they are still on the campus. If you take an, uh, for, for an example, an engineer in a ship is a multi-tasked engineer an electrician, an electrical engineer, he does the job of an engineer, I'm an electrician also, when something goes wrong in the ship. So that kind of work culture to be brought to the students, but that, that can be done only when we have close nicknet with the industry. So what are we going to do, and particularly what is Chroma going to do to bring industry and the technical universities under one roof for the betterment of the country and so that we can achieve the IoT of everything and skilling India can be done. See, without, uh, uh, okay. I mean, the practical education, we cannot only, uh, I mean, be happy with the theoretical education, which is not going to serve yeah. the purpose. Thank you. Any comments from you, sir? No. Otherwise, I mean, just to give you one quick example, I, sorry, I forgot which university is it. Uh, it is here in uh, Chennai, I think it's Hindustan University. Anna University, Chennai. No, 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 not Anna University. It's a Hindustan University or some uh, name like that. They basically tied up with, uh, uh, this is a, a ship and marine institute in the UK. They've taken that syllabus. They're training about 800 engineers here in Chennai. 200 of them are funded already by uh, APD. Right? They're getting uh, the, the studies funded by the future employer. So there are examples where universities have found a way to come up with a, a syllabus that is extremely relevant for industry. Right? These guys have no problem uh, placing their people. So I think it is, uh, it's both a give and take. 
uh, definitely also from the industry side, but it's also from the university side. And the second thing that I feel extremely strongly about, because I'm German, I honestly really do not like the fact that we're only talking about engineers. We have to look at employment across the board, and we have to stop thinking that an, uh, you know, somebody is working on the line or who's working in, a, uh, even if you're repairing cars, which is one of the things that I used to deal with uh, in my earlier life at Mercedes-Benz. We should stop looking down on these people. These are highly qualified professionals. If you have a decent uh, electricity uh, sort of network in your house, you start appreciating the fact that uh, you need trained employees to get that done. And I think that for us also is a major problem. I really, I mean, we all want to sit and manage, and I don't think that's the right approach going forward. You need all kinds of people, and you need to respect and train all kinds of people. Yeah, please. So my humble sub uh, suggestion to the uh, uh, any forum, uh, especially Chroma, is already a successful uh, event because already a lot of people have come here. We are brainstorming about the issue that's happening in the country. It just should not end here. Probably we should have a policy think tank in Chroma, which actually makes an annual representation to the Ministry of HRD and also Ministry concerned skills or education, whatever it is, technical institutes. And we need to shape the country's policy and look at how it is actually getting impacted also. That's very, very important. We cannot take a macro approach. We should take a micro approach. I understand that Chroma is basically an uh, organization which is actually catering to the one part of the city. So this can be a good model which we can emulate and show as a role model for other uh, forums. We can think about having a public, po uh, think about having a uh, policy think tank within Chroma and make representation to the ministry and try to uh, you know, frame the country's policy so that it becomes a nation building process. I think this can be looked at as an alternative. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, gentlemen, but ladies and gentlemen, you can put forth your questions. I request you to kindly keep your questions relevant to our topic of discussion, which is HR prospects or deficits. Right, so if you can stick to your our topic, please keep your questions relevant to our topic of discussion. We will appreciate that. Yeah. We will take a few more questions, please. We'll have one or two more questions. There's one over here. And then there's one in the back. Can you get a, a mic to the gentleman over here on the right? This is also uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, academic institutions. See, we all very well know that we lag behind at least 20 years back. Whatever they studied in the 90s, still the syllabus is the same. There is no big change. Uh, there are some universities and there are some affiliated colleges. Universities have the uh, uh, freedom to uh, align their syllabuses and affiliated colleges they don't have. And there are uh, a few places where we don't have an opening for internship also. There, uh, we would like to request, maybe you also know, IT industries have already started with some kind of an uh, association with institutions, like Infosys has got the Campus Connect, TCS has something on the same. So there are various um, industries, those have gone into it. And now, if you think, most of the other um, uh, university and academic people also will feel the same. The brightest students join in mechanical, the core, core uh, domain. Uh, Can you just come department. to your question, please? So when we take the mechanical one that is uh, related to chroma, what can we do? Like, we would like to, um, uh, like the industries to come up, establish some kind of a support, maybe a lab establishment, or training the trainer, like uh, faculty can be taken in some kind of a policy which can be uh, introduced and maybe associated uh, um, uh, uh, academic institutions can be from there, we can take the faculty, train them on what they need. The same can be uh, trained back in the institution so that when they move out of the um, uh, uh, engineering, they are not like only a certifi certified engineers, like uh, just holding a certificate, otherwise they can be employable ones. Okay, any comments from your side? That's a very relevant question. 
uh, one thing as you told about that the IT companies are actually getting associated uh, with the institution. The difference here is because uh, you know that the skill requirement which is there in the IT is increasing. And it is increasing mainly because of the automation which is getting into uh, the core of the manufacturing as well. So however it becomes really difficult for the manufacturing kind of our industry to get associated on a regular basis until unless they have a very large base and a requirement. Good suggestion but you have actually raised a very very relevant point is that training the trainer. You know that that's where you know that the where the industry can partner with any kind of an institute whereby you know that your people can come to the industry try to understand that what is the latest technology as far as the mechanicals is concerned or how you know that uh, the technology in the mechanical uh, machines are getting changed and then they can impart that kind of a relevant training to the people so that they become relevant to the industry i think that can be done and it's a fair enough suggestion even i will uh, request that the chroma also can take it up and it's a fair suggestion no, and again, you have the case studies. You have Bits Pilani that has a partnership with Festo Didactic. They have a whole production line focused on energy efficiency. You have Industry 4.0 labs in Gujarat University in cooperation with Bosch. You have uh, uh, factors such as the DEG, which is a German development aid agency that provides uh, retired engineers that can come and teach and impart training. That's how we did mechatronics courses at uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz. So I think there is opportunity. The question is how do we scale right there was one more question in the back yeah <coughs> good yeah. morning uh, good afternoon uh, my name is nanda kumar i'm from uh, M can you M please Martins. speak up sir we can't hear you otherwise hello now yeah. now that's better yeah i'm nanda kumar from uh, mrsens consultancy service uh, like uh, it's very good opportunity to hear this industry uh, 4.0 and uh, the implementation in the future uh, industries i am also planning to start an industry soon in another 3 to 4 months time looking forward to have these automation in place one uh, big challenge uh, which i have seen in uh, automation in the past is like uh, i have a farming industry also farm industry also where when i put up a automation there is a challenge comes like insecurity with uh, people i have uh, 10 people who are working in that farm industry the moment i bring in a small uh, automated sprinkler which does three or four people's uh, job they feel that they are going to lose their job uh, because of this automation and uh, that threat how is this going to be addressed that challenge how is this going to be addressed is it going to be my question? I mean, see, uh, when uh, the computers were introduced in India there was a strike by the bank employees saying okay listen boss I want my typewriter right so basically what has happened uh, it, the technology was introduced and people had to find different jobs in this environment of industry 4.0 the jobs will have to come from everywhere so you have to invest in leather you have to invest in textiles you have to invest in tourism you can't simply say i want the high-end job if somebody cleans a room and makes a fair living that's also a good job that will uh, support one family so that's one point of it uh, the second point is as if i talk to people in the agricultural field their problem is actually finding labor not letting go of labor and that's what is driving a lot of the automation uh, in Indian agriculture right and the challenge is now how do I drive this automation for relatively small farms that on average are 1.5 uh, hectares yeah uh, I agree acres. to your point that uh, farming industry is lagging off uh, human resources uh, the reason for uh, human lacking of human resources is that insecurity what we have. So I also would like to participate in this forum uh, encouraging this industry 4.40 to my farming industry and the future coming uh, industry which I am going to set up. Uh, maybe I will be in touch with all these uh, colleagues and uh, try to implement this uh, in my small micro tiny industry. 